are on chairs, <laughs> that are on cushions, that are on another chair. <laughs> But got, we've got the background. But we've got the background and that's the most important as thing. As long as that little chair says fine. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, someone's ringing. Let oh. me hang up on them. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to uh, have Paul Van Mechren with me. Now, did I say that right? No. There was a G in there. I don't know where that's I came from. I wasn't, it was a K. Yeah. Mechren. Yeah, but you went Van Mechren. I don't know where the G was coming from. <laughs> Mechren. Mechren. Oh, yeah, is there a fine. roll of the R? Always. That's the Mechren. Dutch R. Yeah. This is actually really nice because you just kicked my tripod. It's fine. Did you... They won't recognize, they won't see that. Well, well, you first met in Dharamshala yeah. in 2016, um, in a week when you, it was, well, you guys broke my heart. <laughs> because that's, uh, if I wasn't a supporter of associates before then, I really was <laughs> after them because you came so close to qualifying for the Super 12s. Um, get, what do you remember about that? I think one thing I remember is what's called the Super Tens, wasn't it? Because there's only oh, yeah, one team that went through. Super Tens, yeah. Um, I remember a very good game against Bangladesh that we probably should have won. Mm. Uh, and uh, all the other days were pretty wet. <laughs> we had a rain of game against Oman. And then uh, because of the ground stuff, putting in the shift uh, for our game against Ireland, uh, the first game, um, we got a six over game in which gave us some cricket, but um, yeah, I think some, a place like Dharamshala will stick for you forever, so that was pretty special to play some cricket down there. Yeah, I, do you know what, um, I, I almost never uh, have team shirts because, you know, I like to say neutral all the time, but you guys did give me a training shirt and Sid Monger as well, and we were talking the other day, Sid and I, we both still have our training shirts, which were really nice. Because you guys always have the best kits, right? They're playing shirts, yeah, playing shirts always the best. I don't think there are many teams who got a better playing shirt than us, but uh, that year we had a special training shirt, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got a slightly more boring, just blue one this year, but our playing shirt is definitely the best one here at the tournament. When I was young, I played netball and we had orange uniforms because I'm from a town, I don't know if you know this, not many people do. I'm from a town called Orange, which was named after William Prince of Orange, so I'm practically Dutch. There we go. Right? There you go. Um, so but you've been having an absolute crack at this tournament, right? You've been bowling so fast and so well. What I, I, We spoke about this the other night when we were catching up, but can you tell us if you've done anything different in the lead up to this that's actually helped you bowl fast? Yeah, um, obviously I'm contracted with Gloucestershire and uh, we had a bowling coach consultant in for a few months called Robbie Joseph. Um, and uh, we did a lot of work the last couple months going back and the week before I left we just made my jump a little bit longer instead of sort of jumping up like you see a fast bowlers do the cue was to jump forward so my jump became a little bit longer so I had to take that back and uh, something I've been really good in in my action always was coming up and over mm -hmm. um, which do people understand cricket know what we're talking about so the shoulders are working up and over instead of around like a spinner mm -hmm. Um, or some spinners maybe and I was a li little bit lazy in coming around uh, my body instead of coming up and over so those two fixes and uh, once I arrived in the UK uh, in, the, in Australia That's not where the we UK are. Um, everything just clicked and and I've just I haven't done anything special here uh, to keep it up but I think just those two small corrections in my action or changes in my action just allowed me to ball a bit quicker oh, hey. How difficult is it to implement those? Like if you've been bowling a certain way for a long period of time and then you go, okay, we're going to make these two tweaks. That must be easy, well, more difficult than it sounds though, uh, with muscle memory and stuff. No, the up and over was something I've always done, but just more getting into bad habits, maybe a few injuries and trying to change your action to, to put different stresses on your body. So mm -hmm. probably trying to take a bit of stress off my back uh, coming a bit more round, arm round, more, a bit more round probably helped that. Um, and the jump was a bit of an adjustment. I felt like the first week I was pretty much bowling half volleys for the whole week, and I was just felt like I was striding like big strides, and it sort of meant I couldn't get over, mm. up and over. But um, yeah, my last bowling session in, in Bristol was actually some of the worst I've bowled, uh, outcome-wise. The pace was up and it yeah. all felt pretty good. And then I got here 
in Australia we actually started in Adelaide where we were going to finish the trip so that's quite a nice little round trip um, and things just fell into place and clicked yeah. Uh, so yeah pretty good well it's certainly been great to watch it is there a favorite wicket that you've taken oh, in the yes. tournament yeah probably uh, my first wicket against Sri Lanka um, just the uh, I've done it a lot this tournament where I've gone short full mm -hmm. and it's worked out quite a few times but um, that was just I hit a hard length and it just bounced a bit more and, and cramped him for room and then the next ball I went full and straight and it's one of the probably quickest balls I've bought this tournament and it just everything that's just one of those one in a million balls that just everything felt right and as soon as you let go you almost knew you, felt you had a wicket so yeah. like I ran in I was as soon as I let go, I was like, this has got to be a wicket. And I had the same feeling against India twice, <laughs> with Virat and, and Sky, but they just managed to get a bit of bet on it. Uh, but that one against uh, Sri Lanka was pretty special. Yeah, well, it, I, I go back to that, that 2016 and, and how heartbreaking it was. I, I remember you guys saying at the time, we just want to, we just want to shot at the big boys. I remember you calling them the big boys. Um, now you guys are, the big boys as well right in the super yeah. trials but it's it's a, it's a difficult road for you to get here and it's, it's probably only going to get more difficult in the future with the way the regional qualifiers yeah. are, are about because you're going to be competing aren't you with with scotland and ireland how if if i could put you in charge of cricket because we've talked about what resources and stuff so you Paul Van Mekren yeah <laughs> I know I said that really badly that time too it's all right. <laughs> oh no uh, you are in charge of cricket what what would you do what would you do to ensure that that we had more competitive countries coming through um I think this World Cup has shown that no matter what team you are everyone can be beaten uh, West Indies making, not making it through the group stage is quite an upset. Namibia, not just just beating Sri Lanka, but smashing Sri Lanka. Um, I think the Zimbabwe beating Pakistan. There are a thousand of, or there are thousands, a, a lot of these stories this World Cup, and it just shows that if you put a, so if you put four group tournaments, which you normally in, in any sports World Cup. And you have an associate in each team that associate can spoil the party for at least one of those teams in that group and send them home while they might be the tournament favorites just thinking about ireland beating england as well so um you know we can spoil the party and uh, the gap you know I, I, as you said i was speaking about playing the big boys i think a lot of the top associates you're still playing against the big guys, but they don't scare us anymore. We go into that game very confident that we can beat those guys. Um, and, and we've had that same attitude against all the teams that we've played here. And I think we've been a little bit disappointed with our own performances at times, but we've also been very proud at a lot of the stuff that we've done so far this trip. And um, if you want to make it better, you, you involve associates a lot more in that future tour program or however they call it and even if that's a prep series before then playing a, a ODI series or a T20 series against two test nations so if a team is playing South Africa why don't you go and play Namibia and Zimbabwe if you come to England play Scotland Ireland and ourselves um, if you want to improve cricket and make it a more global game that's how I would do it I guess you I mean you're probably more diplomatic than me because how I look at it is what what happened with the with the Super League it was so great because it was actually not relying on the kindness of teams to go ah oh, we are going there let's drop mm. by and we'll play Netherlands because we're going to England it was actually part of the the program yeah. so they they had to do it and Zimbabwe were just here playing ODIs and uh, Zimbabwe going to be back here playing ODIs without mm being forced to because it's in there so that's what i think it was a bad move yeah. bad move um but you you've been am i allowed to ask uh, ask about you know you've been doing some things off the field to try and help i guess the system in the netherlands become more professional uh, as, as sort of forming a players association tell us yeah. a bit about that um it is something that peter sailor and tim van der guchten tried to set up before me 
Um, so sort of there was a bit of chat within the team about it. And then Peter Saylor took over the captaincy and he couldn't combine those two things because it does take a bit of extra time. And then COVID happened and lockdown and then um, I phoned Scott Edwards because I thought he had some extra time as well. And um, us together sort of set up the Dutch Player Association, the Dutch Cricket Association. Um, and uh, that's been going on for a couple of years now and we've had some small wins for the for the players and hopefully in the next next few months we can set up an MOU and really get like to that level where the other player association are where you have almost a seat on the table with the with the with the cricket boards and, and you know get the best for Dutch cricket, not for the players individually, but as the, as a collective for Dutch cricket, how are we gonna make Dutch cricket better? How are we gonna make sure there's a pathway for guys to be a professional cricketer? Because I've played club, club cricket with when I was young with so many talented cricketers who should have been playing for the Dutch team, but because there was never a pathway, it was like, okay, I'm gonna go and study. I need to go and work. If, if there are a few contracts up for grabs that are worth a, a, a yearly salary, then guys can actually go and have the backing of the family and to say, well, why don't you have a go in professional cricket in Holland? And uh, that that will be major. And for like an example was the the Euro Slam uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been a if if that would have happened and it was still going on, having 18 guys on a on almost a yearly salary for three weeks. Uh, would have been a game changer in Holland. Um, that unfortunately didn't happen, so we have to look at a different, different options now. But if we can, if we, the idea is to get something for, for not the guys playing cricket now, but for guys who are going to play for the Dutch team in 20, 30, 40, 50 years time. If we can set a, a, a structured setup where guys can play professional cricket in Holland, even if it's four or five guys in the national team who will form the the core of the national team, then then we've had a success. So I mean, obviously, yeah, county cricket has been really important for you and your development. You've been able to play uh, for a couple of counties as well. And there's been a little bit of talk of the idea of, of there being a Dutch team playing in, in the Blast or something. It's happened before, hasn't it? So is, is that something else you'd like to see happen? My, my first year, I was playing in the Pro 40 with the Dutch team. Um, and I read uh, online that Scotland is trying to have conversations with the ECB about joining the, the T20 Blast and maybe the 100s. Um, I know we've got someone in Holland who's very open to that idea. Um, but, I mean, we can compete. The, the guys we've playing cricket for the national team, uh, some of the guys who are not here and live in Holland are very, very good cricketers and can play at that county level. So. If we can get into that T20, if we can get into the Blast or the Hundreds and play against quality oppositions as we've got in the UK, there's no reason why we can not only just be there and, and be there for our development, but we can actually have a run at finals day and be at Edgbaston during the T20 Blast finals day. There's no, we are just as good as, as some of the other counties in the UK. Yeah, well, it, it sounds like there are so many good ideas and ways to get forward. Just need to actually get the people who can make these decisions mm -hmm. on board as well. Uh, this World Cup for you, I know you're a bit disappointed with the fact that you may have lost games that you possibly could have won. But overall, has, has it been a positive a, a, and a developmental, further developmental, uh, I guess, series for the Dutch team? I hope so. I ho like Again, we've done a lot of good things here, more more than the bad things. We've done a lot more good things, and hopefully, this exposure and and sort of the momentum we've got, uh, the the messages I've got from Holland and other guys have gotten from Holland, where kids are watching the game, who are playing cricket, uh, some of the older generation guys who sort of got away from cricket, but now all of a sudden are watching the games again and and talking about cricket. Um, it's massive, so hopefully we can get some people who used to play cricket back into the game, get some new faces back into the game. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm 100% sure that our, that our kids who are already playing the game in Holland are more motivated than ever to play for the Dutch team. So hopefully we can use that momentum and, and make that uh, group of players coming through and, and who want to commit to Dutch cricket bigger and therefore hopefully stronger. Okay, well we one more game to yeah. do a bit of 
giant killing, if you like. <laughs> um, and they're going to be wounded, aren't they? Because we've got South Africa, yeah. right? They've lost to Pakistan. They're going to be wanting to come hard. Does that excite you, the thought that they, they're probably going to want to come hard at you? Well, we thought the same thing about Pakistan. <laughs> that backfired a little bit. But um, South Africa has been probably one of the standout teams this tournament. Um, coming in, not as an underdog, but uh, I think no one has was expecting them to fire the way they've done and, and um, yeah they're going to be a very tough team to beat uh, but there will be a lot of pressure on them because if they lose against us they're probably out of the tournament so um, there, there will be some extra pressure on them and we got nothing to lose so hopefully that that is in our favour and um, we'll see what happens on the day itself. Well, best of luck. I'm looking forward to, to watching you bowl again. And uh, it's been so good to see you from 2016 and all the disappointment be around for a lot longer in this tournament. And I really hope that we see you back in many more tournaments as well. Let's and let's, let's just put him in charge of cricket. <laughs> you are now in charge of cricket. Done. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. Cheers. Now I can get down. Okay. I'm 6'4", so I can just jump oh, off. Oh, that's good for you. Wait. Uh. Ah. There we go. <laughs>